but let's hope neither one of these maps ever makes a comeback in future COD games. Let's go over some hated, not the worst, sometimes they are, maps in COD history. Okay, let's get an obvious one out of the way right now. Drone. Black Ops 2's Drone. Now, it was one of the larger maps in the game, and it was also one of the most elaborate maps, with, which people don't really talk about, but that also made it a nightmare to play. Drone was not only big, but it also had a ton of hallways, corridors, passageways, whatever you want to call them, streets, alleyways. It was just, it was riddled with them. This made the map a haven for campers and destroyed the flow. It caused many people to hate it very, very rapidly. And sure, there were some pretty cool standoffs between snipers from one spawn to the other, which was a nice touch. But then again, pretty much everything else about the map, well, it screamed out camper. And that led to people almost always voting against it in the lobby. It was an auto default uh, vote against for me. I don't know about you guys. If you think, I mean, think about it. If you restricted this map to ground war, it would have had a better reputation. But since it was in standard 6v6 modes, it got a terrible one. And I think it's a pretty easy choice to kick off today's video. Next up is the USS Texas in Call of Duty World War II. This, this could have been cool. It could have. Now, COD World War II uh, is a pretty solid game now. But when it first came out, it was disappointing. Largely because the map design and the lack of content. Just the straight up lack of content. There was no content. One of the most hated maps in the game was the USS Texas, which was an absolutely gorgeous map. It was a stunning map. It looked great and it had an interesting design. It took place on a massive army carrier and it was a really cool idea, but the more you played it, well, the more you probably hated it and the more that cool visual style started to wear off. USS Texas was a standard three lane map, but the spawns in the high ground areas were at complete odds with one another, which created a map where anyone of any skill level could spawn trap with little to no effort. The spawns seemed to be totally locked on the far, on the two farthest spots of the ships. And since both sides also had a high ground area with a head glitch and it was safe to sit there during spawns, you could just sit up there with a sniper or an LMG and lock the other team up in their spawn indefinitely. The USS Texas, it was a tough map, especially in hardcore where you could be spawn trapped with literally any gun. At number eight, one of my most hated maps, Freefall in Call of Duty Ghosts. Now I've said this before, I don't know whose idea it was to make a map that literally gave people nausea and motion sickness, but they did it. The idea, I guess, was interesting, setting a Call of Duty map in a skyscraper as it was collapsing, but this meant the movement of the game mixed with the movement of the map, well, it ended up actually physically making people sick. And on top of all that, the map itself was poorly designed. This was just another aspect of COD Ghost that ended up hurting it, as it seemed Infinity Ward was more interested at that time with trying to do new interesting things with the technology than make a well-designed game. And it led to them doing a lot of things that were different just for the sake of being different, which is a mentality that also led to the infamous SATCOMs. Hopefully, COD devs got the message about making moving maps like this one because it's a cool idea and concept, but it doesn't work in practice. Next up is Carentan in Call of Duty World War II. This is one of the OG classic COD maps. It appeared in the original Call of Duty. Then it came back in COD 2, and then it was remade as Chinatown in COD 4 and Modern Warfare Remastered. And as a salute to the classic COD area, Sledgehammer decided to remake this map for Call of Duty World War II, but they didn't really take into account how much the COD formula has changed since those days. Carentan in COD World War II was almost identical to the previous versions, but due to the changes in the gameplay formula from previous COD games, it played like crap. The killstreaks, the spawns, the division system, they all contributed to a very slow, campy, and often laggy experience that nobody wanted to play. And it sucks when an old map comes back in a new COD game, and it's not as good as it was before. But it really, really, really sucks when a classic map comes back and is arguably the worst map in the game. That just hits you in the feels if you're a COD fan. At number six, this one slapped you in the face. It didn't just hit you in the feels. Gustav Cannon in Call of Duty World War II. You're seeing a trend here with World War II maps now. I lied. Carentan was not the worst map in this game because I think everybody would agree that Gustav takes that title, just runs away with that title. Gustav Cannon was the biggest map in the game for standard multiplayer and for a map, it was big. The spawns were pretty bad as well. Normally bigger maps at least have diverse spawn points, but it seemed that Gustav, well, there was only a handful of places you could actually be put, and all of them were never where you wanted to be. It took forever to get anywhere. Much of the map was wide open with no cover, and in the dead center of the map, where the B flag was in domination, 
was a massive area of high ground leading to a tons of spawn trapping and plenty of camping because nobody wanted to go out in the open and actually try to fight. This map ended up becoming so hated that it ended up being a meme in the COD community with pretty much every COD YouTuber and streamer making fun of it any chance they got. I even think there was a time Sledgehammer made fun of it themselves. This month's giveaway is for a brand new PlayStation 4 console. All you have to do to enter is like the video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, turn on those notifications, and tweet me why you want to win it with your Twitter handle included. Cracking into the top five. Block and COD 4. Call of Duty Modern Warfare changed everything, but it seemed that its maps were either really, really good or really, really bad, and maybe one or two maps in the middle. One of the really, really bad maps was Block, and I have never actually met anyone who legitimately can make a case for liking it. Now, it was set in Ukraine in a massive abandoned apartment complex, and this meant there were so many floors and windows for people to camp in. It also meant that absolutely nobody wanted to run out into the middle of the courtyard where the B flag was in domination because they would immediately get gunned down by all the campers. Now, honestly, Block may be the single most unbalanced domination map in COD history because the B flag was such a nightmare to get to, it led to many games to go into timeouts and other games basically just being erased to see who got the B flag first because there was no way the other team was going to take it back. Now, I'm sure... There are some of you who like this map for its slower pace and emphasis on stealthy play and sniping, but for the majority of us, the rest of us, Block was a nightmare. Next up is Downturn in Modern Warfare 3, the map that literally nobody liked. Now, MW3 had some pretty solid map design if you ask me, but there were a few outliers and Downturn was the most noticeable one. It was bad. It was set in the remains of the destroyed city, had you running between destroyed building streets and underneath the roads via subway tunnels, but the abundance of lanes, that's what made it terrible for game flow. It turned most of it either into a camping fest or a game of hide and go seek as you ran around just looking for somebody to shoot at and engage. Now in Ground War, the pacing problems were solved a little bit, but then you were just left with a really poorly designed map with a ton of campers and limited visibility. Now, visually, it was a cool map, and it was definitely weird to see Wall Street portrayed in such a state, but in terms of actual gameplay, which is the most important part of a video game, I think it is, it was bad. And speaking of maps set in destroyed cities, I bet you can't guess what's next. You probably guessed it, Aftermath and Black Ops 2. Despite the fact that people praise Black Ops 2, and it deserves that praise, the base game certainly had some duds in the map department. Drone. Aftermath, when talking about crap Black Ops 2 maps, pretty much everyone will tell you the worst of the bunch was this one, which was ironically almost identical to Modern Warfare 3's downturn and turn of theming and flaws, just like downturn. Aftermath was set in an urban area destroyed by warfare and it had you running through the remains to be destroyed of the buildings and streets, but once again, just like downturn, there was no flow. You had random paths to get between lanes and the abundance of camping spots was bad as well as areas with very limited visibility. Aftermath and Downturn were, they were just weirdly similar and both total crap to play. So let's hope neither one of these maps ever makes a comeback in future COD games. At number two, and I don't understand this map, Exodus and Black Ops 3. This map would literally crash your game. It would crash your game when you were loaded. It wasn't a, a horrible map. It was actually okay when it was played on the Xbox One, but the PS4 community hated it because of how buggy it was on that system. And there was never an explanation or a fix as to why. Exodus was a medium large size map in Black Ops 3 with a lot of narrow areas both indoors and out, making for some interesting objective games. But upon the game's launch in late 2015, PS4 players were hit with a frustrating bug that would cause the game to crash whenever this map tried to load, but the bug didn't stop. Now the Xbox One didn't crash while loading, but all the platforms had numerous visual glitches on the map, mainly with textures not loading and colors being randomly incorrect. The map was pulled from the rotation on PS4 a little ways into the game cycle, and eventually it was put back in to fix the crashing problem, but the visual glitches, they were never patched. So while this map really wasn't all that bad in terms of design, it was a pain to play because of the poor optimization and testing it took forever to load in. And at number one today, Stonehaven and Ghost. Shouldn't be a surprise. One of the biggest maps in COD history, which wasn't exactly appropriate for a 6v6 game. Now, there are plenty of defenders of this map. This video is a list of the most hated maps, not the worst. I don't think anybody can argue against Stonehaven being one of the most hated. Now, I mean, people still reference it whenever a new large map comes out in a COD game, and even the people who were never really into Ghost still remember the snooze fest that was Stonehaven. Whenever I talk about this map, I always reference my theory that Ghost was supposed to be a much bigger game and that Stonehaven was supposed to be played in 12v12, which would probably have worked fine. But since 12v12 was never a thing in Ghost, 
we were stuck playing 6v6 on a giant map where nothing ever happened because people were too spread out and it took forever to get to the objective. So while some people may have found value in it, the majority of the community didn't. And it's getting the number one spot today. It was visually beautiful. It would be cool to see it come back in Modern Warfare 20v20. That would be fun. But other than that, nope. Nope, it wasn't any good. And there you have it. Those are some of the most hated maps in COD history. Let me know where I got it right. Let me know where I got it wrong. If you guys enjoyed, take a second, drop a like. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Please turn on those notifications, and I'll see you soon.